Good afternoon. Uh, today, I'd like to discuss uh, the uh, modernization efforts uh, made in Meiji, Japan. Uh, this table lists key events from the 17th century to the end of the Meiji period. Uh, the 16th century uh, in Japan is called the Sengoku or Warring States period during which powerful daimyos or military overlords uh, fought against each other to gain military and political supremacy. The country was unified by Oda Nobunaga and his protege Toyotomi Hideyoshi. By winning uh, the Battle of Sekigara against the Hideyoshi loyalists in 1600, Tokugawa Ieyasu established Tokugawa Baku or uh, Shog Tokugawa Shogunate. For the sake of uh, national security, Tokugawa Baku in 1637 uh, shut off the country toward the outside world. The country remained secluded until the arrival of the U.S. fleet commanded by Commodore Perry in 1853. A year later, Japan signed the Treaty of Kanazawa, opening the country uh, to the United States. And uh, similar unequal treaties with other Western powers uh, followed. When the Shogun government succumbed, to foreigners to open the country, a resistance movement against the shogunate broke out, and the country uh, fell into a virtual state of civil war. The dissidents, with the catchy phrase of Son no Joi, or upholding the emperor and expelling the barbarians uh, uh, won the civil war and uh, they restored the authority of emperor. This event is known as Meiji Restoration. Meiji Japan quickly started a successful modernization which is born out in a forceful opening of Korea and her victories in wars against the Qing China and Imperial Russia. By the time Emperor Meiji died in 1912, uh, Japan was already recognized as one of the world powers. Uh, in this brief look at uh, modern Japanese history, two things stand out. One is her quick acceptance of the opening of the country, the other is her success in fast modernization. It is relatively easy to answer why uh, Japan accepted the opening uh, uh, very quickly. Of the military background, the Japanese leaders quickly recognized the military superiority of the foreign intruders. Those included, they also knew about what happened to China uh, during the Opium Wars and after. Therefore, when Commodore Perry returned for the answer, the Shogun government agreed to sign the Treaty of Kanazawa, which was an equal treaty, including extraterritoriality for the Americans. Basically, uh, Meiji reforms had two goals. One was uh, to strengthen Japan through reforms uh, to resist the foreign powers. The second goal was domestic. The Meiji government wanted to control political power, consolidate uh, political power to avoid any future revolts against the new government. 
And uh, to achieve these goals, um, the Meiji uh, government tried to adopt the best practices from Europe and the United States. So uh, in 1971, uh, it sent the so-called Iwakura mission to the United States and uh, several European countries. The mission included, in addition to the staff, over 100 uh, administrators and scholars and students. Basically, it was a learning uh, mission. Reform measures were taken, uh, basically all aspects of life, uh, first administration, education, military reforms. The Navy was built on model of the British uh, Navy, which was uh, undisputably the best uh, and the strongest. The Army uh, tried to emulate uh, the German Army, uh, known as the strongest uh, at the time. There were uh, many economic and uh, political reforms. Uh, there were also judicial reforms, uh, which contributed uh, uh, to the abolishment of unequal treaties with the Western powers. And uh, there were even uh, religious uh, reforms. By looking at the table, you may think that the uh, right mix of policies led to Japan's quick modernization or westernization. But we should be careful. When we look back uh, things, we tend to fall into determinism, as if things uh, were destined that way. But the outcome, uh, as we will see, was never predetermined. Even in uh, Japan's modernization, there were key junctures where things could have gone wrong. Besides, formulating policies is uh, not an easy thing for a backward country. Furthermore, getting them implemented is an even greater challenge. Even when uh, properly implemented, the policies may not bring about the intended uh, outcome. Therefore, uh, leadership uh, is uh, very important. But uh, where did uh, this new leadership come from? Besides, as we shall see, the reforms were very, very costly. Where did the money that financed the costly reforms come from? To answer these questions, we have to look at the changes that had taken place during the Tokugawa period. The need to look at the longer processes is vindicated uh, if we look at the British industrialization. Uh, because so many things changed in so short a time, it was called Industrial Revolution uh, by Arnold Toynbee. In fact, however, uh, it was a culmination of several long processes. Capital had been accumulated in the course of international trade and colonial exploitation. Uh, there had been technological advances even uh, before Industrial uh, Revolution, as you can see in the next four slides. The so-called Industrial Revolution was the result of harnessing new energy sources to uh, machinery. And uh, Industrial Revolution was made possible uh, by the preceding Agricultural Revolution. New tools and machinery 
new methods of cultivation were introduced, uh, which raised agricultural uh, productivity. As a new advanced farming uh, developed, less labor was required. So uh, uh, the peasants were expelled uh, from the uh, farmlands in the form uh, in the course of enclosure uh, movement. Labor released from agriculture provided the uh, labor force uh, now needed uh, by factories. As you can see here, uh, very sophisticated um, uh, machines uh, were being made uh, well before the industrialization. Uh, David Landis, an economic historian at Harvard, uh, wrote a book uh, titled The Revolution in Time. Uh, according to him, uh, clock making was uh, the pinnacle of um, um, machine building. It's uh, fairly complicated. But as you can see here, uh, back in the uh, 14th century, a mechanical clock uh, was made in the Great Britain. And uh, uh, later, not uh, in the uh, UK, but uh, Brenner table clock uh, was not much different from the uh, mechanical uh, uh, clocks uh, of the uh, later period. And then, uh, the, um, well, in uh, 1701, Jetro Tool uh, invented uh, seed drill, uh, which uh, improved uh, the efficiency, labor efficiency dramatically. So, um, in that sort of revolution, uh, was possible because the foundations had been laid uh, well before the so-called Industrial Revolution. Returning to Japan, uh, Japanese industrialization was also helped uh, by changes that had occurred in the earlier period. Pervasive changes took place throughout Japan between the 17th century and the 19th century. Uh, despite a very mild population growth, uh, there was um, a doubling of the cultivated acreage from around 5 million acres in 1600 to 11.5 million acres by 1868. Uh, this indicates uh, there was a kind of uh, agricultural revolution in Tokugawa, Japan, and the population of uh, some uh, 30 million people uh, were becoming increasingly urbanized. Even the most um, rural uh, locations uh, harbored a wider variety and extent of non-agriculture uh, by employment, ranging from cotton dealing and retailing, dyeing and uh, indigo trading and silk rearing and reeling to rice, tea and sardine uh, dealing, cracker making and oil pressing, milling and shop uh, keeping. Uh, by the late uh, Tokugawa era, some 80% of the population uh, generated 60% of the nation's income in agricultural activities. So higher productivity uh, lay uh, with the 4% or more engaged in secondary manufacturers and 10% or so engaged in trade, carriage, urban uh, infrastructure, and financing. Uh, there were about 7% uh, 
uh, uh, samurai and uh, aristocrats, but uh, they contributed very little to national income. The main sources of change uh, were uh, peace and stability itself, and the measures taken to ensure peace and stability uh, by the Tokugawa shogunate. Uh, the measures taken for political purposes led to commercialization, urbanization, and development uh, of transportation and communication network, which in turn helped to bring about uh, political changes that helped industrialization, as we shall see. In this sense, Tokugawa Japan is a good case study of a political uh, economy. Uh, during the warring uh, states period, the country had uh, been fairly open to foreigners. Competing uh, feudal lords valued foreign goods and technology. Actually, the matchlock uh, arquebus introduced by Portuguese in 1543 and um, reverse en engineered and uh, produced locally uh, quickly uh, spread throughout uh, Japan. And um, the spread of uh, matchlock archivists completely uh, changed the way world were fought uh, in Japan. Uh, it helped uh, its early adopter Oda Nobunaga uh, unify the country. In uh, 1548, just uh, six years uh, after its first introduction, Oda used the 500 arquebuses to defeat his arch rival. Uh, during that time, during the Sengoku uh, period, uh, Jesuit uh, missionaries were also uh, allowed in addition to uh, foreign trade. Japanese converts reached several millions, but the shogunate expelled the, Je the Jesuits and persecuted uh, the Christians. Uh, in the process, nearly half a million died. Uh, in 1637, the shogunate sealed off the country, uh, confining the trade with Dutch to an artificial uh, island uh, of Deshima in Nagasaki Harbor in uh, western Kyushu. Uh, embassies were exchanged only with Korea and Ryukyu, uh, today's Okinawa. Secondly, uh, daimyos were reallocated. There were three uh, kinds of daimyos. First uh, was uh, Shimpan uh, daimyos, uh, who were uh, members of the collateral branch of uh, uh, Tokugawa uh, family. They were placed uh, in the strategically located domains. The second uh, was uh, the feudal Fudai uh, daimyos, who were long-time retainers of uh, Tokugawa family. They were placed in domains near to Shimpan domain so that uh, they could assist uh, the Shimpan daimyos should the uh, needs arise. The third category was uh, Tojama daimyos. Uh, these were the daimyos who fought against the Tokugawa army uh, at the Battle of Sekigahara in 1600. They were placed in the peripheral uh, domains. Most famous were Mori of Choshu, which was located at the western end of uh, Honshu, the main island, and Shimaz, family of Sachuma in the southwestern Kyushu. Uh, the lower samurais of these uh, Tozama domains, Tozama Hans, 
later played key roles in the Meiji Restoration. Thirdly, marriages between daimyo families were also subject to approval by the shogunate. Last but not in the least was the Sankin Kodai system. As the assigned reading, the book by E.H. Norman emphasizes, it had a far-reaching impact, social, economic, and political. Enacted in 1634, Sankin Kodai system required all daimyos. Uh, there were uh, about 300 feudal uh, daimyos. Uh, so the, required all the daimyos and their close family members to reside alternately in their dom domains and the capital of Edo, today's uh, Tokyo, and uh, to leave their wives and children as uh, hostages. This system was replicated throughout uh, Japan by the daimyos themselves in an effort to control their own uh, retainers. There were uh, many uh, effects of a sunken uh, Kodai uh, system. Okay, let's uh, imagine a procession of a daimyo with 200 um, uh, retainers uh, traveling uh, a thousand miles uh, for two months to and from Edo. Since the people were watching, the procession had to be full of pomp and grandeur. Along the way, there had to be inns and hostels, restaurants, tea houses to feed and accommodate um, uh, the travelers. Similar processions took place virtually across the country. As I said, there were 300 uh, uh, daimyos. Roads and bridges uh, had to be built. The result was a construction boom. Uh, Edo residents uh, of daimyos had to be built and maintained, and the competition among the daimyos ensure that um, everything, including residence, hostelries, and traveling courts would be extremely ostentatious. The costs were enormous, uh, driving many uh, uh, daimyos into debt with the larger uh, merchants uh, who were also uh, money lenders. The financial problems of the daimyos uh, resulted uh, uh, in the increase of uh, extraction from the peasants. By uh, mid 18th century, uh, 50 or 60 percent of their rice output was gleaned. And to escape feudal taxation, peasant farmers diversified away from traditional crops into cash crops, especially uh, in places near the urban centers. The daimyos, to deal with the, um, the financial problems, uh, reduced uh, stipends that were paid to uh, retainers. And um, uh, the impact was uh, particularly severe among the uh, lower uh, ranking samurais who from the start were paid small uh, stipends. So uh, uh, there was a growing dissatisfaction of lower uh, samurai. Uh, such samurai groups uh, uh, later provided the social 
uh, fodder for the uh, late uh, Tokugawa dissidents. Uh, and uh, they were among those who would take uh, industrial advantage of the commutation uh, of stipends into lump sum after Meiji restoration uh, of 1868. So um, they became uh, government officials uh, after Meiji restoration or they became uh, the entrepreneurs. And um, at that time, the income of the lords were uh, in rice, but uh, they could not carry rice all the way to uh, Tokyo, Edo. Therefore, they had to sell rice uh, in the uh, some big uh, markets that were being developed, no? and uh, they had to carry cash or uh, promissory notes uh, instead of uh, rice. Uh, as a result, the money economy naturally uh, developed and the commerce uh, flourished and the merchant uh, class rose. Divorced from the land. Actually, uh, the, that um, separation of samur the samurai class from the land uh, uh, was uh, uh, made uh, during the uh, Hideyoshi rule. So um, the, before that, uh, part-time soldier, part-time uh, peasants uh, had been there, but um, uh, they were given a choice to become a samurai, samurai uh, and uh, rec uh, receiving uh, stipends, or uh, if they wanted the lands, they had to give up uh, the samurai uh, status. Anyway, the samurai uh, uh, as, uh, the samurais in the Tokugawa period was uh, totally divorced from the land and they were also prohibited from engaging in commercial activities. And uh, because of the peace, internal peace, and the external isolation, uh, there was a little military function to perform. Uh, so uh, many middle and upper samurai uh, solved the problems of service and income by adopting administrative and uh, logistical functions. And uh, financial distress led uh, many domains uh, not only uh, to larger uh, extraction of rice, but also to better financial uh, management. And uh, uh, it also led um, many domains uh, to engage in entrepreneurial activities to increase income. Uh, for example, the load of uh, Satsuma himself uh, was a leading entrepreneur in pottery, in cannons, in the cotton spinning uh, mill uh, established in 1861 at Kagoshima on the basis of the imported uh, Lancaster uh, machinery. And uh, in so uh, some samurai became managers and uh, accountants. And some had experience in running uh, uh, enterprises. Believe it or not, uh, there was a, a diversification uh, of uh, samurai roles uh, during the Tokugawa period. Uh, there were even samurai chefs. Uh, anyway, changing functions of the samurai meant uh, that uh, there existed some samurai who were to play managerial roles when modernization uh, started. A shogunate edict of 1615 limited uh, one castle town in each uh, province. 
This led to a move towards the construction of large uh, castle towns in the middle of uh, their domains. Uh, and these castle towns were uh, centers of conspicuous uh, uh, consumption and their needs had to be satisfied. And a great system of uh, supply uh, developed as the result. Merchants and artisans moved into castle uh, towns and the merchants opens to the in close alliance with the uh, uh, lords and retainers uh, for within the town they were protected and patronized and from this space they became the money lenders the bankers uh, and the adopted uh, sons of their uh, better the level of urbanization in tokugawa japan was extraordinary uh, Edo was one of the largest cities in world history with a population at times of well over 1 million, uh, mostly composed of administrative and aristocratic consumers and goods and services. Uh, Edo was not alone. There were uh, other uh, large administrative, commercial, and cultural centers such as Kobe, Osaka, Kyoto, uh, Nagasaki, and uh, uh, Nagoya. Mm -hmm. Urban population in mid-18th uh, century Japan was possibly 22% or more. Uh, there were uh, 30 or 40 castle towns with a population of over 10,000 uh, each. Such huge urban centers generated a consumer demand of increasing volume and increasing sophistication, which uh, uh, later modern manufacturing techniques from the West uh, could uh, uh, exploit. Um, ah, yes. Uh, what was the uh, urbanization rate uh, in mid 18th century? Well, uh, it was uh, uh, around 15%. Uh, so 15% of British population at the time lived in towns uh, with the uh, 5,000 or a larger uh, population. You can see how urbanized uh, Tokugawa uh, Japan was. Uh, certainly, the um, Meiji modernizers uh, inherited uh, from Tokugawa uh, a high level of literacy, a sturdy revenue base of around 25% of national income, a balanced external trade. However, never assume that uh, these changes in themselves were sufficient to generate industrial revolution of the Meiji era. Uh, as uh, I will touch upon again later on, the thriving merchants were neither entrepreneurs or agents of a political revolution, uh, nor was the third for every modern merchant in late Tokugawa Japan, there were several others who happily depended on usury, patronage, and adoption into the uh, upper class. The most uh, intelligent of the commoners were usually immersed in the traditional land-based uh, commerce. Uh, of uh, rice sales and uh, guild organizations uh, as treasures of uh, domains and uh, in the extension of credit to the shogunate and daimyo rather than uh, engaging in new industries. Nor was the search for new avenues of wealth and expression 
are as great as the fear of China, Russia, and Westernization. Um, beware of um, confusing some seemingly necessary inputs into industrial uh, modernization with an argument about um, uh, uh, causation, sufficient causation. That, um, as we will see, the timing and character of the Meiji Restoration of 1868 and the subsequent uh, industrialization process was uh, some complex compound of uh, long-term internal changes which we had discussed and uh, relatively short-term factors, uh, the most important of which stemmed from uh, an enormous escalation in the interaction with the uh, outside world uh, and uh, their products, techniques, institutions, and ideologies. It is uh, in this conjunction of forces that we might discover some explanation of early Japanese industrialization. Major restoration was made possible by converging uh, factors. Uh, of course, there was a quarterly decay at the center, at the shogunate. And uh, at the same time, uh, there were rising ambitions of some economically dynamic Hans, uh, which happened to be uh, Dozama, mostly uh, Dozama daimyos. And uh, above anything else, there were fears generated by the growing interaction with the industrial Western powers from the 1950s onwards. So um, the distant uh, domains, uh, Joshu, Satsuma, Tosa, Hizen, among others, used the ready symbolism of the emperor against the shogunate. Uh, that was uh, regarded as a capitulating to alien powers. And uh, they developed the popular uh, catchphrase, Son no Joi, to venerate the emperor and expel the uh, foreigners. So um, in Meiji Restoration, as I uh, briefly touched upon, it was the low ranking summarize of these Dozama daimyos uh, that play the key roles uh, uh, in achieving major restoration. And uh, many of them became the oligarchs, major oligarchs. And uh, some others uh, became um, uh, the proponents of human rights during the Daisho democracy period. And uh, some others uh, turned to uh, uh, business. And uh, as we have seen, a mass of uh, reforms were packed into a decade. Uh, administrative departments replaced the fifths of the daimyo. The whole uh, class of uh, 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 daimyos were amalgamated into uh, kajok, the novel class and uh, they were removed of privi other privileges. Uh, and uh, conscription uh, abolished any special status uh, of the uh, samurai. Uh, so uh, some samurais turned to, uh, uh, some samurais uh, became police officers. Some others uh, became uh, 
officers in the military. Some others uh, became uh, businessmen. Um, after the defeat of the uh, Satsuma Rebellion in 1877, uh, reforms uh, uh, escalated in uh, national education, uh, industrial projects, and uh, taxation. We are going to uh, see why national education became so important later on. Trade indeed broadened the horizons and provided the foreign inputs uh, to later industrial uh, production. But continued trade deficit was a serious challenge. During the deficit years from 1868 to 1881, Japan's modernization could have failed. Uh, uh, failure of the regime, collapse of uh, uh, traditional product lines, devaluation of uh, uh, gold and silver, any or all might have rendered the aims of modernizers merely pipe dreams, and the probability of loss of sovereignty at the hands of the Western uh, powers then much more likely. So uh, it was a critical uh, period. The rise of Japanese cotton industry and import substitution policies after 1881 saved uh, Japan from a, a possible dismal fate. During the years of 1890 to 1913, the average annual rate of uh, growth of Japanese volumes uh, measured in volume stood at 8.6%, uh, which was the highest uh, in the world. The second highest rate was Germany's 5.1%. Uh, the world average uh, was 3.5%. Uh, so you can see how rapidly Japanese exports grew before the World War I, saving Japan. By the end of the Meiji era, Japan had reversed the original trading pattern. 50% of exports were manufactured textiles, and one third of imports were of uh, uh, raw cotton. Behind this performance um, was a concentrated uh, utilization of foreign raw materials, machinery, and skills uh, in the production of uh, textiles. Well, G.C. Allen, a British economic uh, historian of Japan, uh, has uh, uh, argued, has long argued, that uh, the merchant and business class of later Tokoa period were not uh, uh, energetic uh, agents uh, of change, as in some uh, early uh, developing countries, but uh, it consisted of um, for the most part, of a mere financial agents of the old regime, few of uh, its uh, members were fitted to act as uh, entrepreneurs in the new era. The alternative agency in Japan was the state. Much of uh, government uh, direct investment and experimentation in modern industry 
uh, was uh, costly and mediocre in quality and uh, effect, but it held the system together. Uh, Gather the threats of uh, Tokugawa assets, built infrastructure, uh, uh, something uh, no one else uh, would or could do, and uh, spread information and uh, incentives. The Meiji state played the developmental roles that had been played by merchants and entrepreneurs in the uh, early developer. Meiji state played another important role. That was it helped build an entrepreneurial class, capitalist class. Uh, <clears throat> the Meiji state provided the subsidies, grants, special loans to assist uh, uh, development of uh, businesses or entrepreneurs. Uh, one uh, such example is um, uh, the, the case of uh, Mitsubishi uh, shipping lines. Um, stimulated by the British and American shipping uh, monopolies, the Meiji state uh, uh, entrusted um, that all the business group with the transportation of troops to the transportation of troops to Kyushu and Taiwan in 1874, awarded the grants of uh, government ships free of charge, subsidized annually Mitsubishi operation, including special grants to maintenance of a naval college, and uh, provided loans to the company for port equipment. The state also built model factories. The government factories, to an extent, uh, were designed to provide state needs for plate glass, bricks, cotton spinning, cloth weaving, as, and so on. Uh, but more projects were intended as models to be emulated and eventually transferred to the private sector at a fraction of the cost. So in this way, the major state helped uh, the capitalist class develop uh, in Japan. Perhaps the most important role played by uh, the Meiji state was uh, its uh, successful resistance to foreign capital, even in the face of rising uh, government debts due to war uh, expenditures. And um, uh, this is why it invested so heavily in human resources. The exclusion of foreign capital and uh, exclusion particularly of uh, direct investment by foreign companies um, meant that a prime role of the government was to substitute the key functions played by these advanced external sources uh, in other cases of late development, such as uh, Germany or Tsarist uh, Russia. Exclusion of direct investment entailed exclusion of foreign skills, organizational know-how, and trading contacts and standards 
uh, all of these had to be provided by the state. This explains the industrial projects, large investments in education and industrial training and hiring of uh, paid foreign employees in mines, industry, and uh, even uh, bureaucracy. The Ministry of Education, founded in 1871, enrolled 28% of children in elementary schools by 1873, a figure that had risen to 46% by 1886. Against a background of new university and technical institute, large numbers of foreign uh, technicians and educators were employed from 1972 at an average salary 10 times that of uh, a Japanese bureaucrat. Uh, which cost up to 50% of a budget of the Ministry of Industry in the years between 1870 to 1890. This number excluded a large number of students and officials who were sent to study abroad. So you can imagine how much money Japan invested, Japan used uh, to ensure technology transfer without involving foreign direct investment. Agricultural improvement through the use of uh, veterans and uh, school grades was joined by government uh, employment of German chemists and Dutch agricultural engineers. So Japan succeeded in getting technology or the expertise transferred without the foreign direct investment by spending uh, a lot of money, which almost uh, uh, bankrupt uh, the state coffers.